All right, next up, I want to talk about Annex A, which are the nine control objectives and 38 controls for ISO 42001. Now, I'm not going to speak in detail about every control or control objective, but I at least want to give you a great overview of what to expect when it comes to interpreting the controls and the general concepts of ISO 42001. Um, I'm also going to point you back to some references, so when you want to read these for yourself, you know where to go do that in Annex B of ISO 42001. In the next couple of lectures after we cover this overview, I'll also be pulling apart some of the big picture principles like the policies, the AI risk assessment, the AI impact assessment. So we'll do a little bit deeper dive on some of those concepts. So for right now, let's cover uh, the nine control objectives and then give an overview of some of those 38 controls uh, that will be in the framework itself. So the framework starts off with policies related to AI, and I'll cover that in detail in the next session of this course. But just know that the, the big picture question is, is, do you have the right policy suite to govern your AI program? That is what this is asking. There's about 10 or 15 different policies that you will want to think through, as well as integrating AI risk into your other policies. And we'll talk about that at length in the next section. But just know that that's a, a key thing that you need to solve um, with this control set. The next thing you need to think in in uh, section three is the internal organization. And a way to think about that control objective is thinking through questions like, do you have the right roles? Do you have the right stakeholders at the table? Do they know they, do they, do they know their role and how they're supposed to operate when it comes to AI risk? Um, what is your reporting structure um, for AI risk, are there independence issues? So things like, let's, let's think um, maybe you have a chief technology officer that is really being pushed to take some risk when it comes to implementing AI in their product. And the company's whole survival is on the line for this product. Now, the question is, does that person really sit in a place in the organization where they can consider risk? Or are they willing to take too many risks that might negatively impact their partners or, or the individual users that the data is being trained on? So that naturally creates an independence issue. That might be a type of risk that you want to uncover and, and adjust your reporting structure for. So those are some of the concepts and thinking exercise in, in the internal organization objective. Uh, A4 covers uh, resources, uh, resources for AI systems. A way to think about that is how do you manage data sources for training AI? What are the tools and third parties? Like, do you integrate with OpenAI or some other tool uh, to consider? What's your compute resources for, for AI? Do you have the systems uh, uh, to, to manage the load, to process fast enough? Um, are they secure? thinking through the compute systems and also the people. Who are the people making the decisions? So all the resources when it comes to AI, that's what that control objective is covering. A5 uh, asks you to assess the impacts of AI systems. So a way to think about that is when you consider your AI risk, how might AI impact the individuals or the groups that use it? A really easy example that I like to provide is think if you are creating an AI system that is going to return uh, legal results on behalf of a customer. Um, for example, they're doing they're going to trial, they're using the AI to come up with case studies and, and trial results, and your AI is producing bad results. Well, an AI impact assessment might ask you to say, well, what is the impact if you're pr producing bad results and how are you managing that risk? So that that's what that control objective is asking you to consider. A6 uh, is AI systems lifecycle. Simply stated, that is asking if the way you develop AI is responsible and trustworthy, and have you integrated AI into your system development and product lifecycle. A7 is data for AI systems. Um, the question that that is trying to get at is where does the data come from that you're training AI from? Is it good data? Is it trustworthy? Is it up to date? Is it permitted to be used to train data? So just thinking about the AI, uh, the AI the data for those AI systems. A8 is information for interested parties of AI systems. That's asking you to think about how you communicate important things to interested parties. That could be uh, new information, that could be permissions, that could be, mean incidents, but having that 
communication strategy for providing information to interested parties. A9 is A, A9 is use of AI systems. And the simple question that that is trying to ask is what is acceptable use for AI? How do you, how do you permit employees to use AI as well as how do you permit your customers to use the systems that you have developed? What are the left and right limits for that? A10, A10 is third party customer relationships. So when you consider the whole supply chain of AI risk, the vendors that you might use to support your products, the integrations that you rely on for your AI products, other key third parties like your customers, your implementers, your integrators, your trainers, what is your risk management approach for inventorying those third parties and managing that risk? And that is the control set and the control objectives for ISO 42001. Obviously, that's a very high level. So where should you go if you want more information and you want to read this in detail? The detailed implement, implementation guidance for ISO 42001 controls is in Annex B of the framework. And that is, a, it, it will take each and every control in that framework and give you, you know, up to a page of commentary on how you can go about thinking about and implementing that particular control. Um, it does it does provide some tactical guidance and some examples in certain cases as well that will really help you break that down. It, it, that would merit its own course. It would take several hours to cover that. But I highly recommend that if you're considering ISO 42001 to read that implementation guidance at Annex B. That is the place you want to go. So what I want to do from here in the next couple of sessions is pull out some of these core concepts and talk about them in a little bit more uh, detail. And in our very next session, we're going to talk about uh, A2, the policies related to AI, and we'll talk you through those 10 or 15 policies that you might want to consider as an organization. So I'll see you in that next session. Mm -hmm.